Hey New Hope, how are you doing? I'm Kelly, I'm your online campus director and just wanna say welcome to you wherever you're watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, on your big screen TV on a Thursday night or if you're watching here live while we're on Facebook, just wanna say welcome to you. If you are watching on Facebook, hang out with me. You know, when you're in person, you're in the lobby and you're talking to people and you can, you know, tell them what's going on in your life and things like that. And we can't really do that here online, but we have this chat section where you can talk to me and tell me what's going on. I get so excited when I hear from you guys and I get to get a picture of where you're watching from, what life is like for you and what church means to you. You know, things are totally different the new normal. We won't be going back to the way things were. And I do want to encourage you to come to an in-person campus. There is something different, you know, kind of like a, a real relationship versus a, a long distance relationship on the phone. You know, there is something different here when you're in person. So I do really want to encourage you to do that. But while we're here in the meantime, we're here for you when you can't be there in person. I really want to connect with you. Talk with me. Tell me what's going on. Post a prayer request. I want to pray for you. Um, today and then during the week and other people are there wanting to pray for you too. Um, our staff goes through afterwards after Sunday and just follows up and, and comments on those things. So talk to me, let me know what's going on in your life. Uh, so today we're gonna be starting our brand new series called Wealth and Pastor Bill with his creative things. You know, it's not just wealth, it's well. And so how to, you know, manage your money, but how to be well and have, you know, um, uh, satisfaction and just not comparing yourselves and just being happy with where you're at with your money. So we're going to get ready to start that series right now. And so we're going to pray and then we're going to get to it. God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you that we are alive. We're breathing. We have another opportunity to worship you with, with our life, how, how, no matter how mundane it is. And if we're home with our kids or if we're you know punching a clock somewhere or we're working at a major corporation god i just pray that each of us would recognize that we do this for your glory that our lives are unto you and so we just worship you today with whatever we're doing and we pray that you would speak to us now we say we are ready we are listening for what it is you have for us to hear today so we just pray god you would speak to us we have open ears and open hearts in your name amen all right let's do it morning and welcome to New Hope. We are glad that you've joined us both here and online. Would you stand with us this morning? Psalm 97 says this, the Lord reigns, let the earth be glad and let the distant shores rejoice. May it start with us, may it start with our praise and our voices singing to the King of all kings. Praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. And let it rise. Let praise arise. Sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. Sing it with all we are and claim your victory. Yeah. 
This is what heaven looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise Sing it out. you. And this is what heaven looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you.
But I do know that when we are walking our journeys, uh, Jesus told us that in this world there would be moments of hardship and trouble. But he didn't leave us there. He said, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. It's not in our own strength that we really can do anything, but it is through Jesus Christ and his strength and his power that we can journey on and journey on in a bold fashion. Our circumstances do not define who our God is. So when we walk through these unknown days, we can trust that our God knows all, that he is sovereign, and that nothing takes him by surprise. We're going to do a song called Always, and it's one of my favorites, and God's timing is perfect, and I just want uh, to remind my own heart and to remind your heart this morning that God is indeed moving, that nothing is stagnant. And so no matter your circumstance today, may you be encouraged that the God of all creation, that the one who loved you first is for you. He adores you. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us first. And we have a God who is fighting for us on our behalf. There's a story in the Bible, and it's, it's the story of Moses, and it's a pretty great story. They would just uh, come to the Red Sea, and, you know, they had seen God do incredible things but how quickly we forget right but they had just seen God in, uh, deliver them from Egypt and here they were facing this Red Sea and they were like oh Moses you should have left us back there it would have been better we would have died in our own land like they just couldn't believe it and this is what Moses says Moses told the people don't be afraid just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today the Egyptians you see today will never be seen again the Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Just be still. May we be a people who armor up, knowing that our God is mightier than the circumstances we face.
walk boldly because you are the one leading us and you are the one who is for us. We love you. We thank you. We praise you. You are so good to us. May today be for your glory. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, New Hope. Thank you, Pastor Bill. And everyone else, well, my name is John Foley, one of the pastors here, and just want to welcome you home to your New Hope family, so welcome home. Special welcome, any visitors with us here in person, online, thank you for, for being with us, and uh, we just want to, we want to welcome you home too. The best way to get to know the New Hope family is to, to fill out those connection cards, put those in the giving boxes, and to be hearing about all the ways to get plugged into this good family. Well, uh, if you need to step out during the service, during the Life Talk, uh, because of a cough or kid, you can catch it all in the lobby there on the monitor. So thank you so much for being here today. I don't know about you, but I want to pray for our nation today. Does that sound good? I think, I think we could use a little prayer. And uh, I just want to continue in that vein of our worship that our, that our help comes from the Lord. Would you, would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we just uh, we bow before you today, and we thank you, Lord, that you call us to come together, Lord, to, to be your church, to be your bride, to be uh, your people, and Lord, we just acknowledge before you today that we have nothing on our own. Zechariah 2.13 says, let all flesh be silent before the Lord, and so we bow before you today, Heavenly Father. We confess our sins, Lord, we we confess our pride. We confess our ways that we know uh, the right way, that we can do it, that we can handle it. But in this out-of-control world, we just thank you that you alone are in control. So, Father, we, we bring our individual hearts before you today and say, cleanse us and forgive us. We come thanking you that you provide our daily bread, that you provide everything we need. And we bring our nation before you today. We say, Lord, have your way. Father, be in our witness. Lord, we just want to hear those promises today. We want to stand on those promises that, that you have overcome. Lord, that we need not fear, that we need not hate. We hear your words to love our enemies, Lord. Lord, let love lead the way. So, Father, we, we thank you for our nation. We thank you for our leaders, Lord. We pray that you would have your way. We pray that you would touch hearts, no matter who is in control in whatever office, Lord. Um, humble our nation. You said if we will pray and we will humble ourselves, you will heal our land. We ask you to heal our land. God, we give you thanks 
for all that you provide. We give you thanks that you are in control. We give you thanks that you have brought us today. And, and Lord, if there's any burdens, if there's anything, we can leave it here today and we can walk out anew because of you, Jesus, because of your blood, because of your word, because of your spirit, because of your perfect love. Have your way with each one here today. Father, we just pray an anointing over uh, the word from Pastor Bill today. We give you thanks for your word today. We give you thanks that your mercies are new every morning. And all God's children said, amen. Amen. Well, watch this short video about Operation Christmas Child, and Pastor Wendy will, will tell you more. Starts its journey with individual love, and each item packed an expression of that love. From there, it finds its way to a drop-off location with thousands of these centers located all over the world. Trucks then transfer the shoebox gift to processing centers where they will be inspected and prayed for by volunteers. Then they're loaded onto containers heading overseas covering thousands of miles. At port, the shoebox gifts resume the journey on ground, some by road and some by trail, concluding their journey at a local church. Each shoebox gift is given to a child in need. Love has traveled many miles to bless that one child. Each shoebox gift is an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus with a child. The child is then invited to attend a follow-up discipleship program where they will grow in their faith. After graduating from the Greatest Journey Discipleship Program, children will be equipped to share the truth and love of the gospel to family and friends, multiplying the body of Christ all over the world. How great is that? How creative is our God? to take the simplest of things and make the most profound impact around the globe and around the world. So our Hope Kids moment today is really celebrating Operation Christmas Child and letting us be part. So here in this space today and kids online at home, what we want you to do is you have some pictures to color. We want you to create your best artwork ever. And then we want you to write a note in your handwriting, have your grandma, grandpa, mom, and dad help you. Draw a picture of what you look like. And then put those pictures in the giving box. And we're going to make sure that those go in an OCC box for another kid to open. They love to see what you guys create. They think it's absolutely incredible. And I want to let you know this, too. We have four opportunities to gather together in a safe way and pack boxes that will make an impact around the world. And there's information on our social media site and our website, but those are happening starting this week. And it will be at the Isani campus, so bop on south and make a trek that way. And there's friendly times for everybody. And we kids, we want to see you there. We want to see you there, kids, with your artwork and ready to pack some boxes that will impact kids. Can I get a yes? Woohoo! thanks. OK, there you go. That extrovert in me just needs a little something. I don't know what it is. No, but we are glad to partner in that way. I would like to just close our time in prayer this morning. Lord, we do thank you so much just for this video. It's just a minute of what you are doing, a glimpse of how you are working and moving, and that people are hearing about you and coming to know you for who you are. You reveal yourself to those you've created. We just thank you. Lord, thank you that we can be part no matter what age. It's, it's an incredible thing. Go before us again this morning, Lord. I just pray that in this next part, our ears and uh, eyes will just be open to what you have to say. May it be you we hear. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, New Hope. Glad that you're here with us this morning physically and also glad that you're here online with us as well. I think actually as you exit today and on your way out, there's going to be an Operation Christmas Child 
table and you can pick up boxes, information on how to get materials, whether it's going to be a boy or a girl or whatever. But I would encourage you to do multiple boxes. It's, it's incredible to be able to send it across the world. My family personally has actually gotten two letters back in the history time that we have done this from individuals that have received those boxes. So it's an incredible opportunity to influence someone across the world. Well, today we are starting this new series in November here called Wealth, W-E-L-L, parentheses T-H, right? A little different approach of what is wealth. Now, if I placed before you abundant wealth as far as money, possessions, trips, experiences, or if I placed before you this morning your relationship with your spouse, your kids, your extended family, your neighbor, your coworker, what is it you would choose? What is it you would choose this morning? Because if we're honest with ourselves, we live with this choice. Possessions or people. We live with this choice, right? I want to share with you a couple illustrations of this. Years ago when our kids were smaller, my wife got up to come to church. I always leave a lot earlier, so since day one, she's been a single mom at pretty much every church service we've been to. But she got all the kids in the car, in their car seats and that, and the battery was dead. She's like, ah, got them all ready to go to church. The battery's dead. So she got all the girls out, and they walked over to the neighbors and knocked on the door. And she said, oh, excuse me. You know, we were getting ready to go to church, and the battery's dead. Could we borrow one of your cars? To which the neighbor said, sorry, we don't do that. And my wife was just like, awkward. You know, the girls were all like sitting there, what? And so she was just like, so she just gathered them up and went home. But it's a story that shows the tension of possessions or people, right? This last June, my last daughter got her license and so we we're out and about just traveling around and, and running errands in town here, and we decided to take our 67 Mustang convertible. And she was driving around town. We pulled into Walmart to run in, get some things. She ran, got her makeup stuff and that, and I was getting guy stuff. And this lady said, oh, hey, I just saw you on 95 drive by in that Mustang. And she said, was that your daughter driving? And I said, yeah, that was my daughter driving. She says, boy, you must be a really nice dad to let your daughter drive that car. What was she saying in reality? What was she saying? She was making a comment about, hey, the car for possessions is more important than the people. Boy, you must... In a sense, she was giving me a compliment, I think. You must love your daughter more than your car, or whatever, right? But those two stories reveal to us that there is a tension in our lives. And so where would you be this morning? And I think for most of us, at least to save face, we would say, well, yeah, you know, people, people. Oh, yeah, yeah, people. But if I had the ability to have a mouse up here from a computer with the little arrow. And sometimes when you're working on the computer and that, you can take that little arrow and you can hover over an, a word or object and something else pops up. Or if you hover over a word, the definition will pop up and tell you what the definition is. I mean, if, if I could like take a mouse and the arrow and like hover over you personally and get really where you're at with, is it possessions or people? You know, where would it be this morning? 
You know, if, if the little bubble came up above you and said, oh, okay, that's where they are, right? Or where I'm at. Because there's this, this tension. You know, a lot of us would say, well, ideally, I would like to stand right in the middle. <laughs> I mean, I'd like to be right in the middle. But can we? I mean, Jesus challenges us in Matthew 6, 21. He says, hey, where your treasure is, that's ultimately where your heart's going to be. And so, can it be in the middle? I don't know. So in this series called Wealth, W-E-L-L, then T-H, we are going to wrestle with what is true wealth. What is a wealth that is well for our soul, right? That is well for our soul. And the reason I always want to talk about this topic or whatever during this season is we're heading towards the holidays, we're heading towards Black Friday or Christmas and that, where all of a sudden we become this people who need all kinds of stuff, right? All of a sudden, well, we need that, I need that, I need that, right? And, and we get a little whacked out, I think, sometimes. So let's start off this morning first looking at the whole idea of wealth and worldly wisdom. In Randy Elkhorn's book, The Treasure Principle, he makes these interesting observations out of Luke chapter 3. John the Baptist is preaching to the crowds of people who've gathered to hear him and then also be baptized. Three different groups of people ask him what they should do to bear the fruit of repentance. Now, what does it mean, bear the fruit of repentance? It means, what would be a picture of a new life for me? When I repent or I confess my sins and I'm baptized and I decide to follow and I start following Jesus, what would be a picture of my life changing, of a difference in my life? You know, the whole idea of repentance is you're going one way and you realize that you're going the wrong way. And so you confess it, you admit it, and now you turn and you go the other way. And so these individuals are asking John the Baptist, hey, what would reveal us living differently, going the other way after we confess we've been going the wrong way, we confess our sin? So John gives them three interesting answers. His first answer is to the general public. He says, everyone should share food and clothes with the poor. What would be fruit of repentance of a changed life? Share food and clothing with the poor. Boo. Secondly, he's talking to tax collectors in the crowd, and he knows how they are, and he says tax collectors shouldn't pocket extra money. Interesting. Interesting. Then he talks to the soldiers in the crowd. Soldiers should be content with their wage and not extort money. Interesting. He responds to their question of what should be the fruit of repentance? What should it look like? And each answer is related to money and possessions. But no one asked John that. They asked him what kind of life would reflect a spiritual or life transformation. So why didn't John talk about like other things? How she, they should love their spouse or, you know, take care of their kids or watch their language or whatever. The reason being, it's because our approach to money and possessions has this prominent position in our lives. And John is acknowledging this and showing us money and possessions play also a role in our spiritual lives as well. John couldn't talk about one without talking about the other. He couldn't talk about our spiritual life transformation without talking about as well money and our possessions or our stuff, right? 
It's interesting when we look at the story of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is a tax collector. He's watching Jesus as Jesus is coming through town. Jesus sees him and says, Zacchaeus, I need to go to your house for dinner. And he's at Zacchaeus' house and his buddies are there. The religious leaders recognize, oh, they're all the sinners are together with Jesus. But Zacchaeus' life is transformed because he is with Jesus. And he stands up and he says of this transformation. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half my possessions to the poor, and, I have, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Interesting answer, right? I'm sure there were people knocking on his door the next day, Hey, I heard <laughs> four times, Zacchaeus, right? If we look at the early church and how they behaved because now they have met Jesus and given their lives to Jesus and are, are following him, the Jewish converts, it says in Acts 2.45, sold their possessions and gave to those in need. And they had everything in common. I mean, this was a shift in their living and the way they lived and the way they thought and how they handled their possessions, and how they related to people around them. We read in Ecclesiastes 5.10, Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. And so we, we get this picture that maybe John the Baptist is calling for these Christ followers to do this shift in their lives from a focus on possessions now to a shift to focusing on people, on relationships. So in this series on wealth, I want to get us thinking where we are at in our personal approach to our faith and how it intersects with our finances and with our stuff. I think it's important. And I'm not going to like tie up this whole idea of following Jesus and wealth in a nice little pretty bow and give you all the answers. In reality, through this month, I just want us to wrestle with it, come before God with it, and allow him to direct us to the right answers. Because I don't have it all, and I am with you in the wrestling, in the tension at times of, man, possessions or is it people? So let's look secondly then and move from wealth and worldly wisdom to wealth and godly wisdom. So we see this paradigm shift that is to take place as we choose to follow Jesus. And the Apostle Paul gives us some challenge around this in how we are to live now in Romans 12, 1 and 2. Let me read Romans 12, 1 to you. He says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, or brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, meaning what Jesus did for you on the cross, what God did for you in sending his son to die for your sin, to forgive your sin. In view of God's mercy, what he did to offer your bodies as living sacrifices... Holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. What Paul in a nutshell is, is saying here is how we daily live is now to bring worship to God. As we pursue what is holy and pleasing to God, this is ultimately our act of worship. Now, we, we just got done singing, and a lot of people sometimes think that, hey, worship is singing. And I do that for 25 minutes on Sunday, and I worshiped, right? But in reality, what Paul is saying here is that, no, every nook and cranny of your life, whether it is how you do your work during the week, how you think towards your spouse or your kids or your neighbor or your coworker, how you drive to how you spend your money, 
to how you hold your resources or borrow them out, whatever, it all is worship to God. All of it is worship to God. Worship is how we live daily, even down to our finances and our stuff. Now, in order to worship God with what is holy and pleasing then, there has to be this shift in us of thinking and belief, which then moves to action. So Paul goes on to say this in verse 2 of Romans 12. He says, Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So what Paul is saying here, and what John the Baptist was saying earlier, is that when we decide to follow Jesus as Savior and Lord, there's this paradigm shift. There's this new way of thinking and this new way of living that is this picture of fruit of repentance. This transformed life. And it comes in the way of how we think and how we act with our possessions and how we think and how we act around people. And Paul says, hey, there needs to be this transformation and it comes through the renewing of your mind. It comes from leaving your old way of thinking, the worldly way, and thinking like Christ in a new way, like him. As we walk with Jesus, our thinking is changed, and we will know more and more what God desires for us and how we should live. But the beauty of this is that as we change more and more, we recognize it not only brings glory and worship to God, but it brings good to our life. Because we find that we're at a greater place of peace and contentment. Because we have left our old life behind, our old way of thinking and acting. And now Jesus has put onto us his way of thinking and acting his approach to possessions, his approach to people. I love the picture we get in John chapter 4 when Jesus comes up with his disciples to this well. The disciples go into town to get food. Jesus is sitting at this well. It's like noon. And this woman comes. It's the story of the woman at the well. This woman comes, high noon, She's there because she doesn't want to go when other people go because she has this history, right? And Jesus is visiting with her and comes to the conclusion, realizes that she has had five husbands already and the sixth man she is with is not her husband. And Jesus makes this statement. He says, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. You see, Jesus realized in her life that she was thirsting after something. She was continually running after something. She was on her sixth man. You know, either it was a position of power, it was wealth or, you know, a good-looking guy or security or whatever. But, but the other five obviously didn't quench what she was looking for. Now she's on her sixth. But it's this whole picture to us as well, that as we, as we pursue possessions, finance, wealth or whatever, in the wrong way, it's this picture that Jesus is challenging the woman. So it's never going to th- satisfy. It's never going to quench. It's not going to provide. I have something for you. I have what will quench your thirst. And he gives this picture. 
And so through this series, we are going to be focusing in 1 Timothy chapter 6. And Paul's writing to Timothy, his uh, understudy, or he's mentoring Timothy, or we talk about spiritual friendships here. Paul and Timothy are in a spiritual friendship, and Paul's just teaching Timothy about Jesus, about this renewing of his mind and this shift of how Jesus would live. And he says to him in verses 6 through 8, But godliness with contentment is great gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Man, godliness, when you know the next right thing to do. And with contentment, you understand truly what is important in life. Is it people over possessions? For we brought nothing into the world and we will take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, hey, we'll be content with that. And he's calling Timothy to this paradigm shift of thinking and this shift of how to live. But if we're honest again with ourselves this morning, we wrestle with that. Seriously? <laughs> food, and, food and clothing, that's it? I can't be content there. And we wrestle with, is it possessions for us or is it people? There's this story about a girl whose family was very wealthy. One day, her father took her on a trip to the country where he had aimed to show her, to show his daughter how poor people live. So they arrived at a farm of a very poor family. They spent several days there. On their return, the father asked the daughter if she liked the trip. Oh, it was great, Dad, the girl responded. Did you notice how poor people live? The father asked. Yeah, I did, said the girl. The father asked his daughter to tell him in detail some of the impressions that she got from the trip. Well, we only have one dog, and they have four dogs. In our garden, there is a pool to swim in. Well, they have a river that has no end. We have expensive chandeliers all throughout our house but they have stars above their head at night. We have a huge veranda to play on. And they have a whole horizon, said the girl. Then she continued, we have only a small piece of land while they have endless fields. We buy food, they grow it. We have a high fence for protection of our property. And they don't need it. As their friends protect them. The father was stunned. He could not say a word. Then the girl added, Thank you, Dad, for letting me see how poor we really are. You see this paradigm shift? And so through this series on wealth, I want to challenge our viewpoint, including myself, and what is true wealth. Benjamin Franklin said this, contentment makes a poor man rich. Discontentment makes rich men poor. Where are you at with your wealth. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that your word speaks to every area of your, our lives because you want to transform it to look more like Jesus, less like ourselves. And in this whole area, we all wrestle with it because we live in a world where we wrestle with it. And so I pray that you would direct us by your word, by your Holy Spirit, and that each one of us would recognize what truly is wealth 
W-E-L-L-T-H. In your holy name, amen. this beautiful blessing it's been sung here many times and it's found in the Old Testament in Numbers it's the Aaronic blessing and it's an incredible thing that I think we get to sing it in this day and age and know that it is God who originated this blessing and so we're going to invite you to stand this morning as we are entering a new season, a new month again, all things known to our God but as we sing this over you and you sing it in this space and you sing it where you are online today, pray it over your kids and your family and your neighbors, over the East Central region, over our nation, that people would see God for who he is. The Lord bless you.
Lord, it has been good to be in this place today. We just thank you for who you are. We thank you that you have all things under control, all things in your hand. Lord, I just pray that as we walk out the doors today that, boy, you would stir something anew in us and that we would let people know who you are. Ah, oh, don't let us be silent, Lord. Every person we meet, may they see you in us. We thank you for the day. Go before us this week. We praise you for who you are. In your name we pray, amen. I want to let you know there is a prayer team up here that would love to meet with you this morning.